All right, now we're finally getting started. Uh, sorry, there was some technical issues, but we're all set. Uh, and of course, the big enemy of every D&D &D session is scheduling. So a lot of people weren't able to make it today. So we're going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one session today. And we're going to be doing our nice little cleric. It's going to be our man of the hour. So yeah, Larry Stone Dance. Oh wait, are are you Larry Stone Dance? No, I'm, I'm the blue one. Oh, even better, Leviathan actually. Uh, yeah. So you know, I have so many people that are just talking in my ear half the time. So that will be our little uh, divine soul sorcerer. And they are hanging out in the pub. Uh, the local adventurers guild is welcoming anybody that is an adventurer. But there are still a few quests up in the board. There is some missing street urchins that are just completely disappearing without a trace. Uh, at least that's what's put into the quest. There's also some preparations going on for invading a castle where there's a giant bugbear holding a princess captive, as well as a request for some help on a nearby island to push away some sort of evil that's causing some trouble to a, a tribe living on that island. So, what would you like to do, Leviathan? Well, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to go get some alcohol. Of course. Uh, what strength of alcohol would you like to get? Same when I got last time. All right. It's you have poisonous. Yes, yeah, so you have the, uh, <laughs> the local tavern keeper and he says what can i get you and then you reply that you want same the same last as last time yeah and he's um yeah. he's just like you got it you sure you can handle it your friend yeah. wasn't so great last time yeah I know. Right. and then he hands over a nice short glass of that very potent alcohol and go ahead and make a constitution saving throw Yeah, you're definitely feeling it. It's a very strong drink, so like it hits you like a ton of bricks. And he's he's just like, oh, well, you can't seem to handle your liquor as much as you used to. But it's okay. Just have a seat. I'll get you something nice and greasy to top it off. And he, you see him start frying up some like bacon in the pan and get some, get throws it over. It just bacon and bread. It's very simple, but it's just meant to soak up the alcohol. And he slides over the plate. Yeah, and... I just... Go ahead. Yeah, I'll just eat it. Okay. You start scarfing it down. And it makes you feel a little bit better. You're not completely wasted, but you get a little tipsy off of that one drink. Yeah. And, well, my character understands the status quo at this point. I head to the quest board. You head to the quest board, and you see the three quests available that are currently there uh, between the missing street urchins, the princess in the castle, as well as the tribe that needs some help. I just, uh, I'll do the missing street urchins one. All right. So the missing street urchins requires you to talk to the local guard and get some additional information to help them with their investigation. It says, yeah, all right. Okay. So I go talk to them. Okay. So you head off to the town guard. Uh, we're going to go to the city streets and I will just remove these folks from the board. As you walk the city streets, it is very bustling. Um, it seems like there's a lot going on. People seem to be preparing for some sort of festival or some sort of big event that's coming in the near future. Uh, did festival like two days ago? What was that? Wasn't that like a festival two days ago? So there was the like moon. Uh, what is it? The eclipse that came, uh, but that festival is more of like. It, it's essentially their Halloween, and it comes at random, but they're prepping for something in the near future, and that was probably and that Halloween one was probably a couple days ago, 
at this point. They like to have a lot of festivals in this town. Yeah, okay. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. With a 13, you do notice that there are a fair amount of unique fruits and stuff, and um, there isn't anybody shady that you can tell, but you do see the town guards seem to be very much on edge, and you see that there are a couple local street urchins that are also especially on edge and don't seem to be begging for money as much or trying to confront any random individuals. I'm going to head over to the town guard and ask them about the yeah, living street urchins. Okay, great. Uh, and San Ryu, I want to say that's how you say his name. Uh, yes, I'm definitely going to be doing a Yu Yu Haka show in the future. I really like that anime. So uh, you go and you speak to the town guard and he says, oh, you need to speak to the lead investigator. We're not allowed to talk about that one. And then he uh, sees that you have the like flyer in your hand and tries to guide you off uh, towards the local investigator's office. Uh, but immediately after getting there, you notice it's fairly empty. And um, so what would you like to do? It seems like the office is a little bit bustling, but the investigator himself, as well as a handful of policemen, seem to be missing. I'm going to ask about that. Like, what happened? And you see somebody, like, shuffling papers and trying to sort things out, and they're like, oh, there was another one. What other one? It, they kind of look around very conspicuously and say, another, another one's gone missing. Oh. How many have been gone missing so far? We're at six. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, so wh why are half of you missing still? If another person went missing, shouldn't more of you be here? Well, they're at the crime scene, and then they get, they kind of look around, and then they slide over a piece of paper with directions or with uh, the essentially the address. I'll head there. Okay, you head on over, and uh, the town guard kind of realizes he's not meant to be included in this. Everything seems to be semi hush hush, but. You managed to get over to the uh, invest investigation site. And when you arrive, we're going to just change the scenery a little. Go with this one. Oh, and I should probably get rid of the ones from the last quest. There we go. Uh, and you notice that there is definitely signs of a struggle but I would need you to do an investigation check or talk to the investigator first. I'll talk to him first. He's probably found more than I can. He looks at you and he's just like, oh, you're one of those adventurers that... Look, I don't need any goddamn help. Well, you're rude. I'm going to roll investigation. Okay. With that investigation, you can see some very obvious things that he seems to not be focusing on. Um, you, it's not a great investigation check, so you can't see like absolutely everything, but you do notice that there's definitely signs of a struggle and there is some unique looking footprints or scuffle marks that you can see, but it seems like the investigator isn't focusing on it at all. Are they human footprints? And human Make shapes? a nature or survival check. 
With that nature check, you can immediately tell that they are barely, very oddly shaped hands, but they're spaced very strangely. It's like you see. Hand prints or footprints. So they seem like there is a set of knuckle prints and then an oddly shaped hand prints. What was that? I'm oh, sorry, I bumped the microphone. Wait, is there only one investigator here? There's one investigator and like five other sort of detectives or like people that are on the case and they're all searching around and stuff. Talk to them. They, they'd probably be less rude to me. Yeah, one of them uh, seems to be looking your way a lot and kind of like trying to shake his head, trying to get your attention to come over. Oh, I'll, I'll go over then. Okay. He, he says like, oh, look, this has been going on for a long time now. And this guy's a freaking moron. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't want anybody else in on it, but. We could definitely use the help. Did you notice anything? And prints that aren't human. Oh. We've only been looking for much more humanoid appearing folks. And then he follows you over and he's kind of like trying to hide behind the lead investigator. And he just says like, what? Um, And he starts to check things out and he notices that like right underneath or right where the prints start there is a strange like um sign post coming out of a house and there's a sign hanging and he looks up and he says it looks like it was hanging from up there and then he starts something with yeah, go Something ahead. Something was hanging from a signpost and it came down and grabbed him? Says, that, that, that seems to be what it is, but that's very strange. And then he starts like following some of the scuffle marks and then he's like, and then this is where they disappear. And he notice, and he like starts checking the area a bit and he makes an investigation check. Um, I tell if this is supposed to be Sherlock Holmes. This... Uh, he. I mean, you haven't asked his name yet, but. Oh, what's your name? Uh, his name is Rory. And he goes. That he's like, I, I, I've been trying to stop that. this guy. He says, I've been trying to search for this guy for a while, and this dumbass has just been getting in the way nonstop. I mean, he does seem really rude. He's, he is a total kind of jerk. And he, uh, he says, hey, I, I'd be willing to help you out if you meet me here a little later tonight. Yeah, all right. Um, and as you can, are you going to hang out there? Are you going to go somewhere uh, else? No, I don't think I can hang out at a crime scene. <laughs> I mean, you have the authority to, but you might not be super welcomed yeah. by the lead investigator. Yeah, he seems rude, so I'm just going to go for, for a bit. All right, so where do you want to go? Uh, yeah, where I'll go. Okay, so you go to the. Uh, are you just gonna head to like the local tavern, or are you gonna go back to the? Yeah, Adventurer's that just Golf? seems like my character's thing. So okay, she just goes get to knock on. All right, so uh, you go to the closest pub, which is really around the corner, and uh, there is another bartender there, and he's just like, "Hey, what can I get you?" Same thing as you. <laughs> oh uh, well, are you going back to the original place, or are you going to a new tavern? Because there's a uh, tavern that's the closer. Drink you have. Okay, he goes. He's like, oh well, we've got some dwarven alcohol. 
And then, and he kind of like shift, shifts around and looks back and forth. He's like, we also got some of that infernal stuff. Oh, yeah. Says, All right, if that's what you really okay. want, that'll be five silver for a single shot. Yeah, okay. Yep, yeah, so you slide over the five silver and he slides over the shot. And it's almost like he's nervous about touching it as it's kind of like vibrating on the table. Yeah, I'm at ASMR, so my character is also kind of an idiot. So I think she'll be fine. <laughs> All right, so you go ahead and are you just downing it? Yep. All right, so go yeah, ahead she's and. She's like, I'm at ASMR, I'll be fine. Yeah, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, okay. But you can do so at advantage because you're in ASMR and this is some sort of infernal drink. You manage to down that and you feel it like burn. Like it, it feels like it's r almost trying to like rot you away from the inside. But then you feel that like inner divinity kind of wrangle it in and make it so you're not so damaged. But you're like, oh, God damn. Like it, it's like your voice drops three octaves after the shot. But you you manage to handle it with extreme gusto. I see address at his place. Uh, the, yeah, I'll see, be back. Yeah, you, you take note of the address as it is called the uh, the bearded schnauzer. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, I guess... Uh, there are some I'm other just, patrons have, in the bar and things like that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm just gonna... I have nothing else to do, so actually, I'll just head back to the crime scene. Okay, uh, so you hang out there for a couple hours just to let the investigation die down. And thank you, Michael Reeves. I appreciate you, uh, your support of the stream. But um, you go back to the investigation site and you see that the one person... Rory, that you had spoken with earlier, uh, is kind of hanging out there waiting for you. Okay. Well, I speak to him. He looks at you and says, thanks for coming back. This has been going on far longer than anybody likes to admit. This is the 27th person that's gone missing. I... Oh, wow, I thought it was six. Okay. So that's all that they're reporting, but there's been so many more. We only started actually investigating it a little over a week ago, and it seems like they just keep dropping. Are you willing to, to do what it takes to take yeah, care of this? Help. All right, great. Uh, and then he says, I know of a few street urchins that might be able to give us some additional insight. And he starts trying right, to like well, guide you along. He says, great. Hi. And he starts walking along and there are a group of what appear to be like teenage uh, boys and girls that live on the street. And they're like, all right, we're meeting you, but we can't stay out here like this. This is way too dangerous right now. So is there a place we can just go? It's like, let's just get this conversation over with. We don't want you coming where we like to hang out. There's less people that know where we stay, the better. Yeah, right. So, uh, be anything lately? <laughs> they, I, I don't know. That's fine. If you want to do, um, you can do an insight check or a persuasion check just to try and like make them feel more comfortable and try to urge them to release, divulge any information. So you do a persuasion check and you're very convincing. You let them know, you know, they can trust you. They're, there's nothing to worry about. You're there to help. And they say, all right, fine. There's been some person lurking around. We never really get a good look at its face, but 
they've had a tendency to get a few of us one-on-one and the next thing you know, they disappear. Most of us are wising up, but they've been offering a lot and we don't really have much. It is cloaked, but one of us, I, I did hear that it had a tail. And it, it, it seemed to be humanoid. It was shaped like a humanoid, but it definitely had a tail. And then, and then it, they seem to be like looking back and forth. And with that comfortable, that comfortability that they have with you after that persuasion check, they say one of us saw its feet and it was, they were hands. Hey, back in the, the crime scene, the, were, the, were the handprints on the ground? Said, y- yeah, they were, as Rory starts trying to piece everything together. And he says, well, there's, there was like fist prints and there were feet prints that were somehow hand prints. And you can go ahead and make a nature, another nature check if you want. If you want some additional insight. With that nature check, you start thinking of like races that might fit. And you realize it's probably some sort of monkey-like race. Which you have not seen any of those but you you've heard stories about them but you have not seen any of them in this city so far okay so it's a monkey i mean it, well it was hanging on a sign so that makes sense you see you say it's a monkey out loud and rory like looks at you and he's just like a dozy and he's just like oh my god of course and you see him start trying to like scramble off i follow i follow him yeah, uh so you follow him and you see him like go back to this very small apartment building and he seems to like not even be acknowledging you he's just like in the zone and he's just like, I, I knew there was something weird about that. And he starts like opening a door and he you notice as he like swings open this door, there's a strange outfit and mask. And he's Oh my god, it's Batman. It is Wait, no, not no, it Batman. But yeah, oh boy. And, and he like looks back at you realizing that you were behind him as he was like so focused, and he's just like Oh. I I don't get this reference. Uh it's fine. It's slightly more uh, it's it it's slightly more obscure than Batman. And he's just like, if you're really willing to help, let's do this. And he you see him okay, start sure. to suit up. And let me get uh I'm getting the image up right now. Huh. Two. Oh. Rory is short for Rorschach. So, uh, he, who is from the Watchmen series, and he's like, we need to take this thing down. As he yeah, completely okay. suits up in a full... Cons- and, and you're like, and I want you to make a perception check. Yep, you, oh. everything seems fine. The yeah. whatever alcohol you took earlier definitely like destroyed your sinuses a little bit. Otherwise, you'd be able to tell that he smells terrible. Like this, oh. like this outfit has not been washed in a long time. But to you, it seems fine. So, yeah, okay. 
So uh, he, you see like the Charlie Day version of all the strings connecting a bunch of pictures and stuff in this closet that he opened up. And he's like, there was rumors that a, a Dozy had come into town and that happens to coincide and timeline. He's just like, I didn't connect the dots. And he's, well, let's go find him. Says, All right, let's do this. So he goes along and you, you do, you do head out into what is now the night. And he has a very interesting contraption on his hip. That seems to be some sort of like, you know, grappling hook thing, but he is just kind of walking the streets and you notice that people are kind of avoiding eye contact, like trying not to look at this guy. Um, he might have a bit of a reputation. What'd you say? Wait, is he just walking around on the street with the outfit? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's walking and stomping through and he's like, we need to, uh, we need to find where this thing is going. And I am trying to figure out where to start. So, I mean, you're the detective. So, uh, it's like, well, well uh, go ahead. Um, so, uh, Dozy came to town a couple, like, like a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And then people started going missing around the same time. Yeah, but a lot of people yeah. come in and out of town, and he won't, he didn't want to assume that it was any one person because people come and go constantly. Yeah. Okay. So he's he finally connected it to who might be at the cause of it, but now he needs to figure out where it's been hiding. I mean, that's assuming it has a hideout. True. It's a monkey. It could just be running around. It says, true. It, it could just be running around. But the bodies have been going missing, so they need to be taken somewhere. Wait, hold on. Is there blood at like the crime scenes? So he's he's like, no. There... Any evidence that the people actually died? It's like, no, just that they've gone missing. They they seem to be dragged off, and then their drag marks seem to suddenly disappear. And he goes back to the crime scene with you to try and get a better feel of what's going on. Uh, he finds the drag marks, and he sees it go to a wall and then it just stops maybe it's like a hidden wall go ahead and make no, i'm gonna try and run through the wall like harry potter style all right go ahead and make a uh yeah I, I mean make an athletics check to see how hard you're running i guess yeah my character's kind of lazy. yeah you run face first into the wall and you take Two bludgeoning damage as you smack your face on the wall. Yeah, that's fair. And you see, even though you can't see Rorschach's face, he just kind of like, you, you feel the sense of like, oh no, I've made a huge mistake in trusting this person. Hi, Asul. Uh, and he looks and investigates the wall. He's just like, well... This does seem to be really solid. Otherwise, he would have broken through something. And he starts so, feeling the wall. It is, it's, so it's like opening. It's like a wall that opens up. No, he, he like it's you, you ran into a fully solid wall. Oh. And it, there was no opening or anything. You just smacked right into it. And he starts feeling. And he's just like, there was no give, no nothing. This is This is purely solid. But he starts patting it down where you ran into it, and he notices that there is a slight scuff above where you ran. And he looks up, 
the monkey. Maybe he can climb it. It's just like, and he like smacks his own head. He's like, of course. And you see him take his grappling hook and he throws it up on the roof. And he says like, all right, let's do this. And he starts climbing up. I, I climb up. All right. You follow him up to the roof and you see that there are plenty more drag marks and there are multiple footprints now. And I want you to make footprints or uh, actual footprints. Oh. And I want you to make uh, either another investigation check or an arcana check. Yeah, either one of those. They're both a minus one. Okay. Uh, you do notice a few strange things, but not a lot. Uh, like there's some random dirt and uh, a small scorch mark. And. It is a scorch mark? Yeah. There's like a scorch mark from some sort of fire. And then uh, just because you happen to be so connected to water-based things, you do also find that there is like a, a muddy bit. Like there were some random pebbles and rocks, but then out of nowhere, it's like there's this one spot that is super wet and damp and it's only just now starting to dry out. So there must have been a lot of water. So the, the dirt and rocks are probably from him being dragged across the ground and like grown up. But there's a scorch mark and there's water. That's... I'm going to check out the scorch mark first. Yeah, you, you see the scorch and it's like... it. You feel like... Uh, I, I need you to make an arcana check on that one. Yeah, with that crit fail, you like rub your hand in the scorch mark and you're like, I know this is something. And then you burn your hand because there's still smoldering embers taking <laughs> taking another one fire damage. Okay, I know it's magical now, Arcana. Yeah. Like you can sense that there's something magical, uh, yeah. but you did hurt yourself in the process. Okay, so what's Rorschach doing? He's like feeling the muddy bits and trying to get a good feel for what's going on. And you see him start tracking more of these footprints. And he's, he's just like, why would they have, why would there, why would there be this kind of elemental damage? This doesn't make sense. So, Maybe it's a monkey that knows magic. But no, they turn into footprints. So. It's like there has to be more than one. So. Yeah. Okay, so the monkey kidnapped the person, dragged him up here, and then at what point would the footprints, if there's more than one, then if the monkey, that means the monkey just disappeared. You know, footprints do still just appear. He's like, yeah. So, and, and then you see like the the and, and he starts like noticing. Oh well, this where it got softer from the water. The footprints suddenly look heavier. It's like I bet the monkey picked it up, picked up the person, and they went somewhere. And then he starts trying to like look around. And then he sees the footprints going across the rooftop and he starts following it. But at what point would the monkey get footprints? Uh, Wait, he, hand he, he's looking at uh, the hand footprints, but there is also like normal booted footprints as are well. Are going the same way? They are all going the same way. Okay, I'll follow them. All right, so you start following him as he goes, starts going from rooftop to rooftop. As these are very close buildings, so it's like you just kind of take a little step across them. No crazy athletics check or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and then you come to what is essentially a like old temple square. 
where it's like the the area where uh, basically all the temples and religious worshiping areas are. And that's where this building kind of drops off and you don't see he's having trouble seeing any footprints or anything at that point. So the footprints disappear? It's like, yeah, he comes to the edge of a building and then you're in the big circle of town where it's just surrounded by like religious temples and worship buildings and stuff like that. I'm going to look for like any hidden like exits or entrances that footprints could have disappeared to. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation or perception check. With that perception check, you look around and you notice that like it goes off of the the roof, but you start looking down and you look at these like this temp this circle of temples and you notice that it seems very odd that there's these, there's an entire row of temples, but then suddenly there's not anything. And then the temples continue. So it's like there's an empty spot. It's a gap. Yeah. It, it's a very noticeable, especially from this vantage point. I'm going to head over to Okay. Rorschach follows you over there. And uh, you find this area that is just completely barren. But it seems like something like used to be there. And Rorschach starts looking around and he finds this uh, like a manhole cover that goes underground, but it doesn't go into a sewer. And he goes, I think we're going, I think they went this way. Yeah, all right. Let's head down. Okay. So you head on down. And I think we should be all good to start this. So I feel like there just being a missing temple brings some serious implications. Yeah. Like, does that mean the monkeys have enough power to just make it so the entire temple disappears? <laughs> well, there might be a little more to it. So uh, you are now on a new map. I want you to go ahead and drag your person onto the map. It, there's only a bit visible in the bottom right corner. Let me go ahead and bring... Hey, does that mean one of the monkeys are like a pretty high political person and they can get the map of Temple demolished? Uh, mm, we'll find out. Uh, we'll figure it out. So, you start coming to the edge and you notice that there is a glow and chanting coming from the middle of the room as that glow begins to illuminate it. I... Oh my God, it's an actual monkey. Yes, okay. so there is an actual monkey, and you see... Wait, are those the four kids from Captain Planet? Indeed they are. Uh, you see the monkey along with the four elemental cultists doing some sort of summoning and there is a altar filled with hearts uh, at the at the top. So you see four elementalists and a monkey holding a plate of hearts and there is a boy in the middle that appears to be still alive that is attempting to be... It looks like it's some sort of ritual sacrifice for a summoning practice. So, earth, fire, water, wind, and hearts? Wait, does that make the monkey Captain Planet? Okay. No, uh, so, for general spoiler, well, I guess it's not a huge spoiler, but they're trying to summon Captain Planet. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, and they're trying to find that wind, missing... Water and fire, does that mean the monkey is part though? Well, so in Captain Planet, there was always the kid who had, whose ring was for heart, but he always had a little monkey on his shoulder. And so the monkey is trying to find the child with heart to sacrifice and bring forth Captain Planet. 
trying to find that person and use him to summon Captain Fun. Exactly. They need to find. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, they uh, have not so noticed you yet, though, because you are off. If you'd Captain like. Planet is a force for good and all that. I mean, in the real world, he is. Do we stop you, them? you don't know that he is a force for good in this oh. world. Yeah. And uh, they've literally Georgia. got a plate filled with human hearts. So. Oh, that's what you meant by hearts. I thought you meant like symbols. No, no, like actual human These are hearts. actual kids. They like, look like kids. I mean, these look like teenagers, but yeah. And the, I love the, the track, uh... Go ahead. Let me check. Yeah, all right. I guess Tidal Wave. All right. So they are completely unaware. We're going to go ahead and roll initiative for everyone, including you. So make sure to click your icon and before you roll initiative and we will start with you rolling or er, casting tidal wave. All right. Let's do, do, do. put it descending, which makes So you go first. Go ahead and cast tidal wave. I cast it so I hit uh the fire guy and yeah, and just just a reminder, there no is fires at the bottom, right? There, uh, there is no fires going on currently, but you can see like some sort of so fire. I hit the kid in the bottom right. Okay, you hit the kid in the bottom right. Um, at the, just a reminder, there yeah, is a boy fire. in the middle who is still alive but attempting to be sacrificed. Is there a way I can hit fire and earth without hitting him? Yes, you can hit fire and earth. You will just uh, go in the upwards oh, direction. Oh, there. So yeah, because what's the... Uh, I'm going to click the show spell description. Uh, 10 feet wide. Yeah, you can get 30 feet long. So yeah, you can definitely hit both fire and earth. No problem. So spell save... 14, deck save for fire. Ooh, okay. And you are definitely hitting both of them for 26 bludgeoning damage, and you have for sure uh, knocked them on their ass. Because yeah. you do additional damage, right? Uh, like, uh, is there yeah. additional damage if they fail? Yeah. Yeah. No, they only take half. They just take half that. Oh, okay. If they do. They're knocked prone. Yeah, so they're both knocked prone. I'm going to turn them prone. But you definitely have yeah. their attention now. But do they know where we are now? Um, let's see. There is a vocal component. Yeah. So unless you did, you sp unless you wanted to spend some sorcery points. Yeah, I don't points. have subtle spell. Okay. If you don't have subtle spell, then... Yeah, they definitely heard you. They're aware of your position. And yes, Chunky Moth, we're going to beat those kids. Um, and so this one is... I ask Haste and Rorschach what they didn't know where we were. Well, uh, you can next turn. But you uh, you used your turn to cast yeah, Tidal Wave. So uh, next time... You should up, be able to reach out. Yeah. Blast us with five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So, the water cultist can see you from this angle and uh, casts. Let me get my. I need to get my spell list up because otherwise this is. Gonna uh, they're going to cast tidal wave. Huh? Uh, no, she's not casting tidal wave at you. At least oh, okay. not yet. Okay. Um, where's my R's? There we go. She casts Ray of Frost at you. And that's at good. Me or uh, that's a good question. 
All right, we're going to do odd and even. You're odd. Oh, she hits Rorschach instead for... Let's roll damage for six cold damage as a splash of water blasts into him and you see him just start charging forward. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and we're gonna go 30 right there. Uh, he, f he fires a crossbow, hand crossbow, at the cold. Ooh, and crit fails. Uh, you see the crossbow suddenly malfunction in his hand to get jammed up, and he starts trying to fiddle with it, trying to get it back into functioning condition. The next up is the fire cultist, who stands up and tries to hit Rorschach with a firebolt because he's closest. And it goes wide, splashing into the pillar right next to Rorschach. The monkey comes up, and he's like, No! No, it's Can almost complete. Speak? Yes, the monkey does. The monkey can oh, yeah, somehow so. speak. Uh, and you see him take out a dagger and go towards the boy on the floor as you see him start performing some sort of ritual. And... Uh, uh, but he is not I mean, like... I not really stop the monkey. I mean, you can, but he not yet. I mean, he's... He's like mid ritual, so he's trying to like complete the ritual while you're occupied. I do really want to fight Captain Planet. <laughs> I mean, if you want to fight Captain Planet, as he would be summoned and be probably pretty powerful, considering it takes a significant amount of hearts to summon him, you're welcome to do it. It's just you have to let the other boy be sacrificed. Oh, yeah. Which may or may not affect your alignment a little bit. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, with that, we're going to the 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So he stands there and you see him like stomp on the ground and he is suddenly covered in stone and he like puts up his fists ready to fight then it's air's turn and goes five ten fifteen twenty and what can she cast we're gonna go with uh yeah we'll go with that you see the the wind start to kick up as suddenly a five foot cube of air starts swirling and we're going to see if she goes for you or for Rorschach. She goes for you this time. And you need to make a strength saving throw. Has she cast Dust Devil? Ooh, with that crit fail, you get slammed into the wall as this Dust Devil starts swirling around. And you wind up taking some extra damage from it. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, but apparently not a whole lot of extra damage as you only take three bludgeoning damage because I rolled very, very low. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yep. Only take three in general or three bonus? Uh, you only take three total. <laughs> I rolled yeah. a I, I rolled an extra D four for damage for that crit fail, and I literally rolled a yeah, one and a two. So and you get pushed one, two, three, you get pushed ten feet that way. Uh let me go ahead and throw a dust devil on the field. Because I want because I like having actual pictures of stuff. JPEG, yeah. yeah. Oh, come on, I need to shrink it down. There we go. Oh, where did you disappear to? I accidentally somehow removed your character from the field, so if you want to throw yourself back on, there you go. That's perfect. So, 
Dust Devil will be there. You be there. We're good to go. Now it's your turn again. I'm going to cast Haze. Well, I'm going to use Twin Spell on both me and Wolfjack to cast Haze. Okay. Just a reminder, you haste only allows you... I mean, it, it will, like, make it so you have advantage on deck saves and all that stuff, but it only... Yeah. it As far as an extra attack, that has to be a physical attack. Yeah. Okay, just a reminder. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, you cast... You double cast haste. Do you want to do anything with your bonus action? A bonus action? Oh, and you're hasted, so you have another action. action if you want that, too. Oh yeah. Uh, hold on. How much? I have. Uh, uh, let's see. One, two, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Okay. I I hit the monkey in the face with my quarter. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll the attack. Yeah, you miss, but you do distract the monkey enough to break his ritual. So he looks at you with the dagger in his hand, and he's ready to brawl. Then, well, I might be first. Then the water cultist turn, who tries to blast Rorschach again, but misses because of the improved AC from being hasted. And it's Rorschach's turn, and he runs up, and he is going to, let's see, he, actually, before he runs up, he's going to shoot his crossbow. Oh my god, seriously? All right, Rorsch, he, Rorschach crit fails again. <laughs> and he throws his crossbow to the ground, because... Screw that I thing. Mean, he's in the middle of the pack. He could just stab one of them. Yeah. So he runs up and he takes the crossbow bolt and tries to stab it since he is hasted and has an extra attack. Uh, and we're going to see if that hits. It does hit. And he gets to do some additional damage because Rorschach is Rorschach. And it's only a d4. He winds up dealing 10 piercing damage. Managing to break through the stone and finding like small little breaks between it with that crossbow bolt. Then it is the fire cultist turn, and he tries to hit you with a fire bolt and misses. Then it's the monkey's turn, who tries to stab you with the ritual dagger and also misses because apparently I am rolling terribly. Then it is the stone guy's turn. Wow, I am rolling everybody bad as he manages to miss Rorschach with a stone punch. The Dust Devil moves 5, 10, 15, 20 and tries to hit Rorschach. Rorschach has to make... Yep, Rorschach manages to succeed so he doesn't take the damage. And now it's your turn again. I... Actually, hold on. Can I use... Is haste let me use the shove action? Uh, yeah, you could use the shove action. I try shove the monkey. All right, you try forward. and sh you try and shove the monkey forward. Uh, go ahead and are you trying to shove it to the ground or shove it away? Oh, just five feet. Okay, I, I need to get him in fire guy. That title. All right, yeah. So you try and shove him five feet. Go ahead and make a strength check. And it's going to be contested by his... Wow, all right, cool. Yeah, you shove him. And you shove him five feet. Action in, yeah, and then I cast Tidal Wave. My right. All right, you cast Tidal Wave, blasting the crap out of both of them with your very, very consistently used Tidal Wave spell. Uh, and we're going to see if they make their saves. All right. That is the least nimble monkey in the world. Uh, almost crit failing, but not quite. And DC 14 and the fire elementalist or fire cultist also fails. So we're going to take 17 bludgeoning damage to both of them. 
and the fire cultist is smacked into the wall and you see him knocked unconscious in the process. So he's unconscious, but he's, uh, unless you want it to be lethal. It is up. No, I'll, I'll keep him alive. All right, so he is knocked out and completely out of the fight for the time being. And the monkey I'll is... I'll kill the monkey, though. All right, well, the, the monkey is not damaged enough to be killed quite yet, but he is currently prone. Then it is the water cultist turn, who hears that giant tidal wave and decides to change her course of action and tries to blast you. Oh my god, I'm rolling so bad. Uh, and misses. You see a f- ray of frost go clear over your head as just... He's 18, by the way. Huh? No, yeah. like, I, I cast haze, so my AC... Yeah, she rolled a 4 and did not have yeah. enough of a plus to have much of anything get anywhere close to you. So you see it, like, come towards you, but it's almost like in slow motion as you're hasted and you just barely dodge out of the way, like... Seriously, that was that was hardly gonna hit. Anyways, what what was the point of that? And then, yeah, uh, as the two water based uh, casters are now facing off with a monkey on its back in between, and Rorschach tries to stab with his piercing bolt and does. Wow. Damage rolls pretty low. Deals only three piercing damage to the man covered in rock. Then we have the fire elementalist is or fire cultist is down already. The monkey stands up and tries to stab you. We'll see if it actually succeeds. It does not. You are like you are like Neo in the Matrix right now and just completely dodging everything being so hasted it's like every it just feels more like everything around you is moving in slow motion and you're like what yeah. the hell i mean my character is like the only character i'm the only character here so i'm just like the protagonist or plot i'm for one episode yeah well i mean you can still die it's just that i'm really really rolling terribly <laughs> like i i have not rolled higher than like a five on almost all of my rolls so or at least any of the ones since this combat started. Now, it is time for a stone punch. And we finally get a hit. And we're going to say it deals that much. Okay. That's going to be 16 damage as, Rorsch- as you hear a crunch against Rorschach's jaw with a stone punch. And you can hear it like echo throughout this chamber. And time for Wind, who is going to use her bonus action for the Dust Devil again against Rorschach. And Rorschach manages to succeed, but she still has her normal action. So where is that? And she is going to... She is going to take your lead. And she watched, walks over and casts haste on the stone man. And now you are up. I'm going to use my regular action to hit the monkey. No. Um, yeah, I use my regular action to hit the monkey. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Ooh, you managed to miss the monkey as it just kind of like nimbly dodges out of the way, monkey style, and it it's like fighting a a monkey. <laughs> They're very nimble. Use my bonus. No, I use my haste action to try shove the monkey. Okay, shove it to the ground or shove it away. Shove it to the ground. All right, go for it. Make a strength check, okay. or a, it, it can be an athletics check, but. If you ha- oh. if you happen to have proficiency in athletics. There you go. Okay. Then we're gonna we're gonna take that crit fail as 
you shove forward, but then you fall prone right in front of the monkey. I cast spells while I'm prone? You can, but you use... Uh, you already used your attack and stuff, so you wouldn't have anything this turn unless you... No, I had my bonus action, and I used Quicken Spell. All right. Yeah, you can do that. Cast Tidal Wave again. <laughs> okay. I'm killing this monkey. All right. All right. You... Oh, yeah. Also, I hit... Since I'm casting on the monkey, can I also hit Earth and Wind at the same time? Uh, yes, you can. But if you go in that direction, you'll most likely hit the sacrificial person right next to you. Ah, crap. And thank you for okay, subscribing, I... BB King. Uh... But you can also start it further away, and you just wouldn't hit the monkey. You know what? Yeah, I, I, um, what? no, actually, I don't do anything. Okay. So you you do not do anything with your bonus action, and oh, since you're prone, she actually has a disadvantage on a ranged attack roll. Can I actually just stand up? I do still have half my movement. Oh yeah, you could just stand up. That's fine. I just stand up. Okay, you stand up. You uses half your movement, and then you see a ray of frost coming your way, which uh, would have hit. But you are hasted, so it does not hit because you get plus two to your AC. So, cool. I really thought this was going to be a much more dangerous fight if it wasn't for the fact that I was rolling so bad. <laughs> like, it, it's it's literally two on five. And yeah. every roll has been just garbage. But cool. So, Rorschach is going to take the disengage action and go five, 10, or no, uh, he can use disengage as his bonus action because we're gonna say that he's more of a rogue type character and he has so he's much- an inquisitive rogue. Pretty That's much. how you would probably go. Pretty much. Uh, and now he's going to stab at the monkey and get full blown sneak attack because you were near him. Uh, that's gonna hit. And that's going to be 13 damage hitting the monkey. The monkey looks not so great. It is in rough shape. Uh, and he gets one more attack because he is hasted. But he doesn't get sneak attack on it because that only happens once per turn. But doesn't matter because he misses anyways. Fire wow. Elementalist turn, although that one's knocked out. The monkey is scared. And it's going to try and run away. But uh, it's not. Action? Yeah, you, it, it does not take the disengage action. It is oh. going to try and run away. It is not a smart monkey, but it still knows a ritual somehow. So uh, go ahead and make your opportunity attack against it. Yeah, that's going to hit. You see the monkey start to run away and you bash it over the head with your quarterstaff and since you said you wanted to kill this monkey you see brain matter just go flying out of the back of its head and as it collapses to like a heap on the on the ground and it is dead then the stone cultists comes up to you and is also hasted tries to do some punches oh my god I crit failed. Um, he falls to the ground right in front of you, and you see his stone armor fall off in the process as he loses concentration on the ability to keep that active. Like fall over prone. Yes, he is. Just fall over. Yeah, he. Oh, okay. I'll just cast tidal wave. Okay. Well, I mean, he's he's prone currently, but you can cast tidal wave on your turn. Yeah, so uh, Rorschach, don't get in my way. Okay. He says, you got it. And the uh, air cultist comes up and tries to hit... Oh, it uses her bonus action to move 
the dust devil closer, but it still only has 30 feet of movement, so it doesn't get quite as far as she would like. And then let's see. Let's see what other good spell she can cast. Dust Devil of Hell? Uh, no, just, a Dust Devil just is just concentration. Because it's really just swirling air. Um... Yeah, we're going to say this happens. Um, no, what the hell? That doesn't do any damage. I don't want that spell. Uh, I'm trying to find something good. But there's not that many good wind spells. Damn it. Uh, so what? No, you can just cast Ray of Frosty and I've had it. Oh, no, this is the air cultist. So uh, I'm trying to... Yeah, okay, I have no idea. Yeah, um... Does she have Thunder Wave? She that does. seems pretty much like an air Yeah, spell. I would say Thunder Wave is probably pretty close. But instead, she whirls around any of the random weapons and whatnot as she casts what is the equivalent of Cloud of Daggers. Uh, and it would hit both you and Rorschach, so I need you to make... Oh. 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 Never mind. There is just a swirling bit of damage around you. It does not damage you yet, but it will at the start of your turn. Okay. As long as she still has concentration on it. And now it is the start of your turn. So you take... Um, wait, can you do opportunity attack from up from? Uh, I don't know. Can she haste the dust devil and dust? Oh, good point, Xavier. She cannot haste and have dust devil out. Way to call me on my crap. That is a good call. The dust devil is gone. And good. cloud of daggers was also concentration, uh, which I had planned for the haste to drop, but I kept forgetting that dust devil was concentration. So thank you for reminding me of that. Uh, that's why comments are a thing. And yes, so you don't notice that the earth cultist at your feet is not hasted anymore, but it is not hasted anymore as a cloud of daggers swirls around you. And now that it's your turn, that cloud of daggers goes into effect, dealing oh. dealing so 10 slashing damage. Jesus Christ. So can he do opportunity attacks for... Uh, let me check. Um, prone okay. conditions. Whoop. Prone. A prone creature. Disadvantage on attack rolls. It can, but it has disadvantage on the attack roll. Oh, I'm just going to keep... I'm just going to move. Oh. Okay. You still take the 10 damage at the start of your turn. Yeah. As does Rorschach. But that's fine. And he tries Throw to... Oh yeah, he he completely misses. Uh, I do need to make yeah. you you need to make a concentration check, so a Constitution saving throw to see if you maintain concentration on haste. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, oh god. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got that shit on lockdown. You're like, no, I know how this works. I'm ha I got haste on, I'm ready to go. I shove both of them with my normal action and my haste action. Okay, where are you shoving them to? Prone. Okay. You yeah, so it'll have disadvantage when I cast Tidal Wave. Okay. So. okay. Uh, go ahead and make two strength checks or athletics checks. Yeah, the first one, you knock the air cultist down, no problem. And the other one. Up, so that the, the water cultist doesn't. Uh, manages to have her good footing, so she's good to go. She's still standing. I am gonna step away. Okay. So make your opportunity in that, because I do have to, you know, not get hit by my own dynamite. Okay, she does manage to stab you with a dagger for 
five piercing damage. So I will need you to make another concentration check. Yep, you managed to pass, but you take that five damage still, and the one that's prone does miss with her cultist and, dagger. And they quicken spell title. All right. So I'm guessing you were going to hit all three of them and go ahead and cast it. <laughs> all right. So the two on the ground fail normally, and this one, the... Uh, the water cultist fails absolutely horribly and gets smashed into the wall, taking extra damage from the tidal wave and going prone as she crit failed. Everybody's taking 21 damage and gets completely obliterated. Uh, the earth cultist is dead. The other two are still alive, but in really rough shape. I'm back and finish them off. Yeah, probably. Uh, the water cultist steps up, stands up, and uh, she is a little woozy, but starts trying to step towards you. And let's see what kind of spells. She's, she's going to go all out, but let's see if she can find anything good. Uh, you know what? You cast it all the time. It's only fair that she casts it. So she's going to cast oh, Tidal Wave. I have advantage. Nice to days, so. Yeah. You have advantage on it. But still, make the deck save. Oh, yeah. Damage does she do? I have 17 health. We'll find out. I could die. Uh, ah, I failed. And you, let's see how much damage she does. Where are my D8s? She does a total of 11 damage. Okay. okay. It's not a lot. I rolled very terribly, as always. But you get knocked prone and take 11 bludgeoning damage. As Rorschach comes running up behind and stabs the crap out of her. Yep. And that's gonna be... Hey, is that the cultist kid that was gonna be used in the ritual so uh... He is, He's, um, but he's not conscious. He's just laying there, okay. kind of just groaning and weird sounds uh you do see rorschach just stab right into the top of the water cultist's head as she her eyes roll back in her head and she falls to the ground limp and then he goes ahead and tries to stab the other cultist and does hit but it doesn't do a lot of damage because he already used a sneak attack and plus he wouldn't be able to, oh well he has advantage so Sneak attack would hit, but uh, he only does two piercing damage, and she is still alive. She stands up and casts Gust to try and get him away. Uh, so that's going to be a strength saving throw from Rorschach, and he manages to fail, but he gets pushed five feet away. And then she is going to try and take off running. 5, 10, 20. Not really getting away. We're both hasted. Yeah, but, I mean, she's a cultist. She does not necessarily smart. And it's your turn. I'm going to go up to her. First of all, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. I might have heard level slot, so I cast two of them. So we do. I cast the second level tier rooms. Okay, go for it. Yeah, you get nine health back. 
Oh, uh, higher level. I have, uh, what's it called? Uh, I have uh, the life generic thing, so I get 13. Uh, yeah, and you get... Well, you also get the... Because it's a higher level cast, you get an additional 5 to that. So you got 14 plus whatever your bonus is. Plus 4. Because the way 18, it... Maybe. Yeah. So that's a lot of health you get back. So, and you still have your and hasted action and I whatever. Back her with my quarter staff. All right. And then, okay, you know what? I then. Uh, I want to check. Is my radiant consumption uh, as an Asimar. Is that, is that a bonus action? Uh, let me double check. Let me check. Pretty sure it's a bonus. They do want to, you know, kill him with that. That's pretty cool. Uh, what kind are you again? I'm a scourge Asimar. Oh, it takes an action. No, oh, well, I just smack her with my quarter staff. Okay, you smack her with your cord. I mean, unless you wanted to use quicken spell on your cure yeah, wounds. Yeah, no, actually, I have enough sorcery points. So. Yeah. So then you use that use for my your last sorcery, two sorcery points to do that, and I activate rating because I'm good. All right, you activate. She takes four damage. She takes four damage just from your. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you just start blasting her with radiant energy as she looks up and she's like, you see this look on her eyes and she's just like, oh my god, what have I done? As it's like you her. Probably eye. assume she's dying. Yeah, as she is dying because her eyes start glowing, and then you just see her fall to the ground. As she dies from your radiant light. Then I end it. Because I don't want to hurt Rorschach. Okay. So you're... He looks at you... Totally unaware previously that you were in Asamar. But he's just like... I, so I just killed three children. Yeah, You you killed three teenagers and a monkey. Uh, although Rorschach kind of killed the monkey. Or, or no, you killed the monkey and Rorschach helped you kill some he killed, teenagers. He killed the water cult. Yeah. So... You know, he killed some teenagers. No big deal. They were cultists. They were trying to summon a all-powerful elemental spirit thing named Captain Planet. So, oh, do we interrogate the kids, or? I mean, there's only one left alive. I mean, yeah. Edge is asking, are they wearing the rings? Oh, I didn't know Monsters of the Multiverse made hit a bonus action for you to use radiant consumption. So I guess it depends on which version we were going with. Oh. But either way, you killed it either I mean, way. Either way, that and combat's over. Yeah. So, But somebody commented on it, which was very helpful to know. It's not a short session. I mean, it's like a, like a one-person session. Too. Yeah, it'll be a little shorter, but that's okay. And we can still keep doing a little bit of role play stuff. Just keep it going. But... Uh, so you find uh, you find that this is are they a, wearing the rings? Are they, they wearing, are wearing the rings. rings. Okay, I'm gonna go take the water ring. All right, you go take the water ring. Uh, well, I take all the rings actually. All right, you you take all of the rings. Uh, obviously, you are much more interested in the water, water ring. Um, I'm going to have to look up really quick what that will do. Let's see, uh, wondrous item. My character has a lack of water powers despite believing themselves to be a water god. I mean kinda. <laughs> that's that that's has been a bit interesting that you do have some And I just cast tidal wave constantly. Yeah, that is like the main thing that you do. Uh let's see. Ring of Jun. So we're gonna say uh, you still got to get the rings identified, but we'll we'll go ahead and play that out. Uh, but as you're in this temple that appears to have been drawn into the ground, and it seems like the whole thing just suddenly got like sunken down, and it's very strange how it worked. But you can see that like this used to be somehow above ground, and then the earth elementalist or cultist 
probably drew the whole thing so beneath ground. They have to move our spell. Yeah, but they did it on like yeah. an insane like scale. And so yeah, the rings have a lot of power. Uh, they have some amplification effects, but uh, it could have been more of like a ritual that they did. And there is an altar further to the, so the north. Water ring might, so the water ring might buff my water, my tidal wave? It could. No, I'm just going to wait for the kid to wake up. Okay. We're going to interrogate it. All right. Uh, as you wait around for a while, he starts to come to, and he looks up at you, and he's just like, "Wait, what? What happened?" Yeah, uh, we won. I mean, I won. Me and him won. You lost, and uh, my intimidation kind of sucks. So uh... <laughs> that that's fine. You're really just telling him facts. And he looks around. Yeah, R- Rorschach, you do your thing. Uh, yeah, Rorschach comes in, being scary as all hell. And he, like, grabs him by the collar. And he's just like, what were all of you doing down here? And he is scary as shit. And the kid uh, basically pisses himself. And he's just like, I just, I thought we would be able to summon the guy. And he just starts rambling off and starts crying. And then Rorschach looks at you. He's like, this kid's pretty useless. Anything you actually want to know? Yeah, okay. Uh, who are you trying to summon? Says the, the spirit guardian of Gaia. This is a temple of Gaia. And then, he, well, I said that wrong as far as voices, but, but he so kind of like says if that. You be- summoned him? Would, you, would you like, would he like work for you? Says he would empower all of us, and then, and then we were all going to be super strong, and then we'd be able to take over the city, and nobody would be able to say oh, no wait, to so us. Oh, wait, you were evil. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, wait, hypothetically, I could summon him since I have the ring, and he'd buff me, and then I could just. Uh, you can make an Arcana check okay. to see if he would, if that's even remotely possible. Uh, my Arcana sucks. Uh, you do see that this is a very complicated ritual circle on the ground, but other than that... Yeah, but it's already drawn out. It is already drawn out. I mean... I will need human sacrifices, though, and that's bad. Yeah. So, um, you have uh, four elemental rings. You have... um, and you're currently in a temple of Gaia. We should probably go tell the investigators about this. Okay. Are you just leaving the ritual sacrifice well, here? No, we shouldn't like leave the bodies here. Okay. Uh, uh, should, what... should we? This is like a sacred temple, but it is underground. Yeah. I mean, you have some dead bodies and a fire I, cultist. I don't know. I'm new to this whole detective thing. He's and the and Rorschach's just like, well, I can't bring them in because I can't let the local guard know that I'm working with them. But I would bring in the fire cultist and probably help out the boy. As there's still like the ritual sacrifice kid that's unconscious in the middle of the circle. Okay, I'm going to go. Um. Well, first off, I'm going to knock the fire guy in. Wait, is there anything we else we should learn from the fire guy? Um, that is up to you. So you four teenagers somehow... Wait, where did you four teenagers learn about a cultic ritual to summon the spirit of Gaia? Well, it was him. And he points to the Hadozi monkey guy. He, says, he let us know we what? could all do it. Oh, wait, why didn't we leave him alive? God damn it. <laughs> so, he was actually a smart monkey. 
Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the monkey was smart enough, but also charismatic enough to corrupt uh, a bunch of teenagers. Okay, just to make sure, can I make maybe... You, you, the monkey was probably planning on betraying them, to be honest. Most likely. Um, a bot ghost, uh, I'm happy you were able to at least check it out. Um, I know you were oversleeping and didn't get a chance to actually join. And don't worry, don't feel bad. We got to have a little one-on-one -on -one session, uh, but thanks for tuning in either way. And we just stopped Captain Planet from being summoned. Um, uh, Rorschach, yeah, I teamed up for, with Rorschach from Watchmen to stop Captain Planet from being yeah, summoned. Yeah, as I throw in as many cameos as humanly possible. <laughs> but um, yeah. You know the four elemental rings from Captain Planet. Yes, the uh, you now have four is, elements. Is there any like rings. practice place in this town where I can try them out? Uh, probably there is more than likely some uh, like wizarding hall or magic hall type of thing. Okay, I'm gonna knock out the kids and then grab the urchin and then bring them to the investigator. Okay, are you gonna be healing the urchin at all, or are you just gonna like hope he wakes up? Wait, or is he injured? Uh, he's unconscious, but he's not physically injured other than like some weird bumps and bruises. Uh, he'll be fine. Okay. So you try and kind of drag him along and Rorschach helps you get out of there, but then he immediately ducks into the shadows as he doesn't want to be. Yeah. Cause he doesn't want to get caught. He's like... Yeah. So, um, you come out and you just kind of shout for some help from the investigators and the town yeah. guard comes running and I they're like, catch them up and everything. And they seem a little suspicious, but then they like, kind of, I'm going to pretend that they knew magic and hide the fact that they had four elemental rings of power. And just cause I kind of want to keep them. Yeah. You, you stash them away in your like pouch ahead of time. Yeah. I'm going to go practice them later. Yeah. So anyway, you, uh, I'm gonna, go ahead. So I get paid. Yeah, you get paid. Uh, you get paid five gold for your help. Uh, and the, I mean, the investigator is pretty pissy about it. He's just like, I said we didn't need your help, but thanks. I guess. Yeah. Whatever. So I'm gonna take up. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to go find a place to take a long rest, and then I'm going to go practice the rings of power. All right. So you go ahead and you um, f head to the like local Adventurers Guild. And are you just like throwing the rings on? or I'm going to try them on one at a time. Okay. You try them on one at a time, and you feel that they're magical. But just throwing them on doesn't really do much. You feel like you need to like pour your own magic into it, and then you realize it requires some kind of attunement. I, I mean, I did just take. Hold on, there are four rings, right? There are four rings. Yes. I can only attune a free item. Yes. Ah, ah. Yes, the ever. The ever epic dilemma of whether or not you uh... fire, water, and air. The avatar element. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna think for a second. Okay, you're welcome to think. Here about... you mentioned that air couldn't really do much besides cast dust devil. Actually. Yeah. But who was the one yeah. who passed haste? Uh, the air one. Ah. I don't really need. Okay, I'm going to grab all of them except air. All right. I'll give air to uh, the monk or something. So you want to attune to all of them, you know, to, to the fire, earth, and... Wait, hold on. Let me think. Earth seems really cool. Like, being able to control... Like, I watch Avatar, and it, in my opinion, seems the coolest. Yeah. Water is my whole thing, and I just love fire in life. Just, just let me think. Okay. I'm going to tune to 
it's gonna get hard because I don't know if you know the specifics as well. Yeah, I mean, unless you actually brought it to somebody and paid them to identify each ring, you're gonna I'm gonna go annoying. pay someone to identify them. Okay, so you go to a local magician who would be able to identify them. He's a little full of himself, but he's willing to do so for one cold per identify. Oh, four cold. Yes. The exact thing I made him out from that quest. I mean, you made one more gold than that, so yeah. I mean, you no. you made a profit, I guess. I mean, I get fire powers, different power. Yeah, I'll have him identify. All right. So uh, he identifies them, and he lets you know if you have a particular affinity towards one of these types of elements, it will boost. I am a, like, water is kind of a thing I got. Yeah, and he says that you will get an additional boost if you happen to be much more attuned to that type of element. Otherwise, it expands your spell list. As it I mean, gives you access to a few particular spells of that element. Which is a that base... That doesn't help, because that's really obvious. Do you know like what kinds of spells? Uh, he starts going through them. And let me bring up my massive spell list. So the fire one will give you... Basically, every fire-based cantrip uh, gives you firebolt and green flame blade and where's and control flames and create bonfire. It also gives you non cantrip. Uh, it also gives you access to, to, to where? Oh, let me see the. Uh, It also gives you, every one of them will give you access to absorb elements. And, come on, where is there? I know there's, there's going to be like one. My character really is lacking damage. Yes, definitely. And, um, and, there are earth and water who seem mostly, oh. And you get access to flaming sphere. Ooh. Well, I already have tidal wave, so yeah. I don't really need Wait, what about the water one? Is there any spell apart from Tidal Wave? So the water one will give you access to the cantrips, so you wouldn't have to cast a spell every time. You would just be able to do it as your action for free. And it will give you Ray of Frost, Shape Water, uh, where's it? Frostbite, the first level spell, Ice Knife, and the... Uh, second level spell. Where is Tidal Wave? Yeah, it would have given you Tidal Wave. <laughs> uh, but since you do have an attunement, I really yeah. need Tidal Wave and Shape Water. So, but it also gives you plus one to any water-based spells because you have an affinity towards water. Like damage to all of your um, attack rolls and your DC on water-based spells. So if you're casting it tidal wave, ice spells. yes, it includes ice spells. So if you I cast could drop shape water and tidal wave, that way I have like I can get a fourth level spell. And Jim Chad, yeah, they can be very uh, OP as rings, but I'm kind of homebrewing them a little bit. But yeah, so that would free up some cantrips that you can cast on your own, so you'd be able to have a little more flexibility. It free ups my third level haste slot, but fourth level spell. Yeah, but it still would require attunement. I, yeah. I mean, as far as the the. What about the earth one? The earth one will give you. I'm not grabbing the air one. That's confirmed. Okay, uh, the earth one does give you. Uh, Wow, oh, there is. It gives you mold earth and there is not a lot of earth spells. Uh, first level oh, earth tremor and second level Maximilian's earth and grasp. 
Oh wait, that actually is good. Yeah. So you get Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. And so Earth for the fire Earth. thing, what like spells do I get? I get Flaming Sphere and Flaming Sphere level. of second level, and uh, first level. I don't think you really get much. I'll have to like double check on all these. You, uh, big hand. Yeah, you 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 can you can get access to some of these, but like um, you you'd get one first level fire related spell. You get one elemental spell of first and second level added to your spell list. They do not give you spell slots, but they give you access to the spells, and you get any spell of that element in in the cantrip level so you get all of the cantrips yeah, related gonna, to the I'm element i'm just gonna take the, the water one okay the water one will give you, you plus one to, yeah you get well you get ice knife of first level you get uh you get tidal wave which you already had and you also get frostbite and uh ray of frost yeah yeah so I get Ice Knife, Ray of Frost, Frostbite. And I'm going to change my Tidal Wave into a 4th level spell since I just have it. Okay, and it does give you plus 1 to your attack rolls and your DC with Water or Ice based Ice spell. Knife, Frostbite. Okay. Yeah, so it, like if you're yeah. casting Tidal Wave, your DC went from 14 to 15. So. Yeah, okay. And your your attack roll really only matters for the Ray of Frost, but it's still helpful. And don't feel bad, Bot Ghost. I know it happens. Life happens. You know, people sleep in. But it was still fun to at least do a one-on-one -on -one session. So, uh, And you can hang on to those rings and try and distribute them if you'd like. Or you can sell them before anybody else I... comes back. How much does the alcohol cost? Uh, depends on the alcohol. They can be anywhere from five silver to one gold for the fancy stuff. and But mostly they usually cost like a few copper for the really basic swill, like normal Oh, yeah, no, I'm not selling. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give them to some of the party. Okay. So you manage to hang on to them and give them to somebody in the party uh, when they are available for the next session. But you head back to the Adventurer's Guild to drink it up, as I assume you would. Yeah. And when you do so, well, let me bring us back to the Adventurer's Pub. Uh, so... I won money last night so I can start buying loot crates from you. Uh, I, I had told Bot Ghost that if he really wanted to cheat at D&D, &D, he could start buying loot crates like Heinz Wulgon did from Overlord, but I, I don't want to actually make him insanely overpowered, so throwing that out. Uh, throwing that out there in general. I mean, it, it might sway me a little bit, but I'm not... I, I have some semblance of dignity. So... You do wind up back at the Adventurer's Hall. You get to party it up a bit. And you're greeted by a local patron. And by patron, I don't mean warlock patron. I mean more like a very rich person. And he's just like, I've heard of all the great work you've been doing. And I'd love to throw you all a party. Yeah. Wait, what? So yeah. You've been helping... You've been helping the community and I want to throw a party for all of the adventurers and everybody's invited. Yeah, okay. That that seems kind of out of nowhere, but yeah, sure, let's He he looks over, he's like, I know, I know, I just I want to show my appreciation and you see the bartender kind of roll his eyes. Do I know this person? You do not. You've never met him. The bartender is just kind of grumbling under his breath. You can go ahead and make either a perception or an insight check to see if you can hear it. Uh -oh. 
you hear him say, uh, the bartender say under his breath, he's like, freaking rich guys always trying to win us over with their money and and he's like scrubbing away at his, like uh, at the glass that he's trying to clean. And he's just like, I bet he's going to run for some sort of political office. Stupid jerk. But it, in from everything you can tell, this guy seem I mean, including that insight check, he seems like a very forward person. He's just wants to reward all of the adventurers for doing such a great job in helping the town. Or helping the city, rather. What's your name? Uh I hate names, damn it. Um I always have to come up with them because oh, I always forget no, them. It wasn't okay. No, he is planned out. I just forgot to come up with a name. Uh, his name is Bracken. I have to keep note of that. I don't know who that is. Uh, his name is Lord Bracken, actually, because he's a bit of... He's rich. He's really, really rich. Wait, you mean the, the guy from Game of Thrones? Uh, okay. Not intentionally. There might be a guy in Game of Thrones named Bracken, but uh, and maybe that snuck into my subconscious, but I, that was not my intention. Wait, so is, is this a reference at all? It is, but I have to change his name, otherwise it's way too obvious. I mean, I called Rorsch. Like a reference. To it, 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 it isn't a, it isn't a very blatant. I've never seen one of so I have no idea whether this is a reference or that. No, this isn't. This would be very, very obvious if I used his real name. But... You're not, we're not going to use his real name. Yeah. Bracken is spelled B-R-C-K-E-N because uh, somebody asked in the chat. A-C-K-E-N. Yeah. Lord Bracken. And, and you see him, he comes up and he shakes your hand and he's just like, it's a pleasure to meet more adventurers. I am Lord Bracken Waldorf. In Waldorf? Yep, Waldorf. I like a high school somewhere. Okay, no. it, it trust me when I say that the name is not going to give you a lot of clues as to who this cameo is. He's a rich guy trying to make make everyone like him. He's a rich guy trying to throw a party as a thank you for helping to clean up the city. And his name is Bracken. Is it Wilson Fisk from Daredevil? Uh, I mean, I didn't say he was a bad guy. He doesn't have to be a bad guy. Yeah, but the guy says, oh, I don't like him. Well, he just doesn't like him because he's rich. He doesn't like rich guys throwing his money, throwing their money around. But I'm not going to give too many more hints other than that. He's planning to throw a big party at a big hall that he's rented out. And it's kind of like a tall building that like he's like, oh, we got multiple floors my businesses do run out of this place. So, you know, I, we will have most of the place to ourselves and we can really just live it up. And hopefully I can show you some thanks. They all don't know who this is. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to know who it is. That's fine. It, it, it won't be obvious until next session. So that's fine. It's not, it, if you figured it out this quickly, I would have 
been a, a, a little sad, to be honest. But next session, you'll be able to start off with a big party. And I mean that hopefully in both ways. And Bot Ghost, you shut your face. You shut your face. Um, as he's trying to spoil stuff. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he's, um, he's throwing a big party and he's wants to thank all of the adventurers and, you know, he's welcoming anybody he can, but he wants to keep it, you know, civil. He wants to get people happy. He wants to make sure that he can really show his appreciation and thanks to everybody in the group. So it's a rich guy. This is going to be a future quest. Okay. Just let me think. Rich guy, this guy thinks he's just going to vote for a political thing. He's a Harvey Dent from Batman. I don't like a big thing. It's you trying to run. I mean, you're you're somewhat on the right track. Oh, my God. It's it. No, it's Bruce Wayne. Yep. With uh, Bracken Waldorf. I just used the initials. So Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Which, since you did manage to get it before, I mean... Some people in a certain somebody in chat, aka bot ghost who likes to spoil everything, would have gotten yeah, that. Open. Yeah, he would have he would have gotten that, but he wasn't able to make it to the session. And since you managed to figure it out on your own, kind of, although I did kind of lead the way, uh, I will give you dungeon master inspiration for figuring it out. And I think you forget about that. Uh, yeah, so. If you do need to re-roll anything at any point, you can always just call it out and say, hey, I have DM inspiration because I totally crit failed something. Um, does, does inspiration count for uh, initiative rolls? If you want it to. Always argue about no, I, I'll let you use it for pretty much anything. It counts for I mean, I, I like to play it that your DM inspiration can be used for almost anything. And even if you just already do something good, you can say, I want to use my DM inspiration to make it do something really freaking cool. And then you just leave it up to me. And then I'll just be like, all right, something will happen. And I will make something awesome happen. But that's only if you are not in the situation where you're like, all right, I want to use it to save my ass. So. But in the meantime, I'm sure you're getting drunk. Uh, what kind of drink yeah. you want? You have any of the infernal stuff? He's like, oh, that infernal stuff? That's illegal in town. Where did you hear about oh, that? Oh, uh, <laughs> No, it's just, I'm an Asimar. I, I heard about it from the, the gods. Uh, make a deception so check. Drink here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look. Yeah, oh, I yeah. was a god once. Yeah. You know, up in heaven, we drank it a lot because it's the only thing that can really affect us. He's just like, oh, well, I didn't know that. Well, then. Wait, uh, does he actually speak of a god now? Well, he kind of does. He crit succeeded on a deception check. So, yeah, he's just like, he's like, oh, I, I, didn't ser I didn't know we were serving straight up divinity in this bar. And he says, um, here. And he just shoves a, uh, like a very nice bottle of, of alcohol towards you and it is a full bottle like this this thing probably would have cost like five gold by itself and he's, uh, and he's just like T take this as a tribute and a thanks and hopefully you can watch down over the other adventurers and keep us all safe and he starts rambling on as you are like, i'm saying like 20 lives at this point i mean you have yeah if you include each individual person in freddy's nightmare I mean, that does it is like I mean, yes, Chunky Moth, he is kind of a god. I don't know. I just might be delusional. Yeah, he, he, he's an Asimar. He just likes to pretend he's a god at times. So I, mean, I think I am. I just don't know. I might be delusional. Yeah, he, he could be completely full of crap. Uh, yeah, but, we're up to you at this point. Yeah, he, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, there might be a situation where... I mean, you were just in a temple that you could have done something with if you wanted to, but, uh, and yeah, if you can convince people to start praying to you with your high charisma, you probably I do could have them. really high charisma. You do. 
So that could help if you wanted to attain some level of godhood. But anyways, uh, so you will be rewarded with a big party next session, which may or may not be themed around the upcoming holiday in the real world. But we'll find out. Yeah, it's November. Yeah, it is currently November, but, uh, you know, I like to try and I like how in the universe, the, like, the holidays are just a couple of days next week. Yeah, it's just, like, constant festivals. So, like, that's what they were preparing for. Uh, but, yeah, I guess technically you do have somebody kind of treating you like a god already, so you do have some path to god. That was completely unintentional. Yeah, I mean, it, it just kind of happened. So if it happens a lot more, you might start getting more divine powers. Who knows? Not funny, so. uh, uh, but I'll with, just cast guidance on this. Yeah, you, you cast guidance on who? Guidance plus... Uh, notice, guidance plus my really good charisma. Yes, that will do, that will do wonders and I have inspiration right now, so... Uh, but next session, we will have some type of Christmas-themed thing. It's just whether or not people can figure out the other connection. Since there's going to be a party, you already know it's being thrown by Bruce Wayne. So that dungeon yeah, master... Mr. Freeze! Um, maybe. I mean, you may just be giving me ideas, but... There's going to be a big theme to the entire party. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, but with that... I have a ring now. You, yeah, and you do have a ring. Uh, it gives you additional spells uh, added to your spell yeah, list. Yeah, I out the spells. Yeah, I see it. I've been seeing them added to your descriptions and stuff. I don't know that I'm going to be adding and bot... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Chunky Moth getting smited by an actual god might be rough and but not even a paladin yeah we do have paladins in the party and we have uh, my been, smite is tidal wave yeah your smite is essentially tidal wave that is your smite and we have been talking about how we have a group essentially called the god squad because we have a cleric a paladin and a divine soul sorcerer um and bot i bot ghost i don't know if I'll be throwing in Joker anytime soon, but we'll find out. And Xavier, Gremlins is a great call. I should really just start talking about the themes that I want to throw in more often because you're giving me all sorts of great ideas. So Gremlins would be a good idea. Uh, one of my other patrons threw out a good idea for what we could do. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. But that's, that's pretty much the session for this time around we did have a two hour session which is a little shorter than usual because we only had one other person because i know there's a bunch of scheduling conflicts and people wound up sleeping in and whatever else which is totally fine life happens scheduling is the hardest part of being a dungeons and dragons player as always so but i'm happy that leviathan managed to stop captain planet from being summoned with the help of rorschach and that was a, a, and it was a bit of chaos, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. So um, hopefully you enjoyed it too. And until next time, uh, we will have another D and D session next month that will most likely be holiday themed. And uh, just to respond to more of these comments that have been coming in, yes, the joker kidnapping a god at a party might get a little out of hand chunky moth i don't know how that would play out but it would be very interesting this guy's a bartender right he probably knows some people what if he starts telling people i'm a god i mean he might he might just be able to be starting to tell people like you know in reality i served a god drinks and he comes in here or she comes in here all the time and then he, yeah, and then he's going yeah, and hopefully, and if his charisma checks are high enough, he might start getting a real following. 
But you might also come across... Oh, and Bot Ghost did call out, Kevin from Home Alone could be setting up some insane traps for the next session. We're going to have... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there is... It's definitely not just going to be Batman related. It's going it's to... Batman gonna, teams up with Kevin from Home Alone. Batman teams up with Kevin from Home Alone to fight uh, Mr. Freeze and take on a bunch mm-hmm. of gremlins and all sorts of random holiday-themed mm-hmm. movies. Yeah. How do I add my uh, my plus one to spell saves? I can't uh, you... add it to the damage. Yeah, you can do it uh, here. If I open up, so just to I can't find a way to add my uh, plus one from the ring to spell save for my tidal wave. And- yeah, you probably won't be able to do it directly with uh, because you can do it to your spell saves overall, but to do it for um, to for just specific spells probably isn't possible on roll 20 at least not that i know of so if you wanted to just either keep track of it or are you planning to mostly stick with just water and frost space spells or no yeah i'll just be water frost and healing okay then if that's the case you can take go into your spells and um you can just change the spell save dc at the top and the spell attack bonus and just add make it 15 and six or you can go into like some deeper stuff which i can run through offline to be a bit easier yeah okay i'll change that yeah and bot ghost yeah if, like oh okay so um here i'll actually pop in here and here if he if you stop clicking around i can do it for you which yeah, Let's see. We got spellcasting ability. DC mod plus one. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that worked. So spellcaster level. Oh, oh, spell attack and damage bonus is one. Yeah. So there we go. I got 15 and plus seven. Yeah. Um, wait, does it add my add to my damage? Uh, no, it's not going to be added to your damage. It's just for the attack rolls and the not not to your damage rolls. So we're not going to be getting you that overpowered that quickly when nobody else has any magic items except for the Cloak of Midnight that we managed to sort out. I will be giving the items to people. Yeah, I mean, we'll be getting more and more items as they go. And I am a big I fan of... The ring. Yeah, you can keep the ring. Hey. And I'm a big okay, fan of growth goes, items. Years in two sessions a month, so I'll probably give him one of the rings. Yeah. So and I, then I, I am, and I am a big fan of, um, of growth items. So like items that grow with your character. So if you wind up getting more powerful and you wind up being able to like enchant that ring further or things like that, it's totally possible. Yeah, I'll be grabbing more water spells. Yeah. So. Uh, and yes, Spot Ghost, I can imagine that she already has a bit of a god complex and it's only going to get worse as the campaign goes on. And Chunky Moth, yeah. yes, the traps would be insane. Yeah, I'm Chunky. a healer. You need me to survive, so I'm important. Yeah, make make Leviathan more overpowered because she's a healer. We need that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, what this is... This is going to be an interesting next session. And I'm happy that everybody got to chime in and chat about it, especially over on Twitch and on YouTube. So thank you so much. Uh, we're going to end the session here. And um, thanks, especially Leviathan, for chiming in. It was good to have a one-on-one session. I haven't done one of those in a really long time. So Thanks again, everybody, for watching. And until next time, going to be going.